I'm disappointed. <laughs> I'm fucking disappointed. Why are you disappointed? Because here we are. Uh huh. Here we are. Yeah. First episode ever in the history of Black Craft. Oh boy. Ten years of a company. We've never had a podcast video on YouTube. That's some bullshit. Here we are mm-hmm. with the first video ever. And Jake Simons, you didn't do your fucking dance. I was. <laughs> no, that's no. Like it's different when the video show, show the people. No, like, I dance crazy when the music. This is like chill. What, what do you want me to do? This is a chill. Listen, this is a chill song. I can't d- dance crazy to a chill song. I, I, I feel like you can. So okay, um, that track is Low Lives. That song is called I Don't Like You. Mm. Wow, you said that right to Will. Dude, dead ass <laughs> eye contact <laughs> on that. Uh, so so real quick, first episode ever uh, on. This is actually episode technically number nineteen. Technically number nineteen, but uh, our first first on YouTube. Yes. <laughs> hey, and we still have the cheesy fucking buttons. We do. We didn't. I did not make the samples yet. It's all good. So, apologies. Uh, I'm Bobby Shabinsky. We are joined with by Jake Simons, Woo. Will Holcomb. So, you, you good, Will? You look a little hot over there. You okay? Yeah. Everybody's been saying that today. Yeah, you yeah, okay? Did, did you, you go feel tanning? Okay? I'm like, no. Uh, it might <laughs> be that uh, Avenged Sevenfold hoodie you got on. It might be the hoodie, but also we just put all this shit together. Like that is see, true. That is very true. <laughs> so it's been five hours getting this together. Shout out to Raul too. Hey, shout out to Raul. Shout out to the whole set here. Mm-hmm. This is great. God. Speaking of Avenged Sevenfold, let's jump into this here. So look, Fright Night, episode number 19. Yep. If you're listening to this on Apple and Spotify, we love you. Thank you. Keep leaving those reviews because shit's going crazy. And uh, this is the first podcast on YouTube. So, so I'm excited. There's a lot to talk about today. I'm going to talk about drugs. Mm-hmm. <laughs> There's going to be a lot of talk Not about the band. Drugs. Not the band. Legal drugs. I'm talking mm. about legal drugs today. Okay, okay. And uh, we're going to talk about scary movies. Oh, boy. We're going to talk about unsigned artists. Yes. So so to clear some confusion real quick here, we are going to combine unsigned bands, mm-hmm. horror movies, mm-hmm. and weed. All into one podcast. But it's all going to be structured. It's all going to be structured. Like... This, this is not a... This will not be structured. I guarantee you this will not be <laughs> fucking structured because... <laughs> I don't know who has more ADD in this room. Which one of us? Who, who do you think has it? I, I think I have it. This guy right here. Yeah, actually, I, I have it pretty it bad, too. though. I yeah, lose true. my keys and my wallet yeah. and my phone at least four to five times each individually a day. That's fair. I did think, <laughs> like, I brought my laptop in here because I was like, might need to do some fact checking, whatever. I don't know if that was actually a good thing or not that I have this thing at my disposal right you're, now. You're going to be on your, what the <laughs> fuck are you going to look at on the internet right now? <laughs> I don't know. I feel like there's going to be a question or something that comes up that we can That's maybe fair. use it for. Okay. Possibly. All right. So I want to jump into this here. So let's talk about first things first here. Mm. Avenge Sevenfold. Mm-hmm. We know those are my dudes. Yes. They got something dropping tomorrow. Ooh. They got something big dropping tomorrow. Actually, technically today. What? Because when this goes live, it'll already be dropped. Oh, wow. 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 Shit. It's a couple big. big drops this week. We're like in the future, but not in the future. Does that make sense? Yes. But yes, a couple big, couple big yeah. drops. So we got the Avenged Sevenfold drop. I don't know what they're dropping. It sounds like a song, I'm guessing. I don't know. Uh, I'll be checking that out. It's already out. Oh, it's um, already out. <laughs> <laughs> so, but but look, the big, the big drop here for us is March 16th. It's like our album release day. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's for our gummies. <laughs> it is for the first ever bat shaped gummies Delta products. And they technically come out on Thursday, but you could really, they drop at midnight, right? They drop at midnight. Uh, yeah. Pacific Thursday. East Coast. Uh, that's a great question. We got to figure that One out. One of those two, because you can buy them on Wednesday. Too. Well, not technically. Technically. You can stay up a little bit. A lot of techni- yeah, a lot of you technical bullshit here, huh? <laughs> yeah. You can stay up. So I want to talk a little bit about these gummies because we have worked so fucking hard on these gummies. Mm. And I just can't believe it's finally here. Our album release day is here. It, it feels like both. It feels like it's like this date is never going to come, and then all of a I'll sudden it's just here. I'm going to show them off. Look at this shit. We this got, is a big deal. We got Haunted Berry. You got that right there? Haunted Berry. Wow. That's a big bat. 
just stay tuned here for a second because <laughs> I got something really we're going to be doing. Haunted Berry. We got Scary Cherry. Ooh. Bat-shaped gummy. And then we got Will's favorite. That's blood, favorite. blood orange. Oh, that's your favorite that too. Dude, blood orange. Best. Blood that orange is my favorite too. They're all, they're all really fucking good though, right? True. Yes. Like oh, there's not dude. one where you're kind of like, eh, this doesn't taste that good. That no. one just to me has okay. to stand out. So for me, it goes haunted berry first, mm-hmm. blood orange second, scary cherry third. Person, I'm, I'm getting tired. The cherry's starting to take over the orange. For really, me. it is. Jake, I'm blood orange through and through. Really, mm-hmm. the, the Discord, the six 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 club's been blown up. About everyone's like they think blood orange is going to be the favorite. I think is going to be the favorite too. I could see it. Mm. So, <laughs> what's unique about these three gummies that I pulled today? We're gonna play a little game. I figured. I figured. I figured. No, hey, we don't want to play hey, games. Well, on games. <laughs> this is the first episode. I, we're I, not I, trying to play games. I want to play a game. <laughs> Raul, you think we should play a game today? Raul says a game. Uh, what is this game? Well, this is a fun game. Mm. So in honor of the three gummies that we're launching this Thursday, although also, by the way, the link right here, Delta extracts.com slash black craft. That's D E L T A mm-hmm. extracts is a little tricky. Cause you're going E X T R A X.com. Some wordplay slash black craft. That's where they'll be dropping exclusively there. We're not going wholesale with it right now at all. We've been getting blown up by wholesale, which we'll, we'll discuss here in a minute. Online only right now. And we're going to be doing a bundle pack. You can buy all three. So so since we're doing a bundle pack of all three. That's exciting. Three, it's exciting. That's right? a lot of gummies hey, in I one know the pack. Way this was going. Hey, this was not easy to do. This was not right easy here. to do what we did here, Jake. This was a pain in the ass. You're excited, right? I am absolutely excited, though. Right? No, you're going to be really excited. <laughs> you're going to be really excited for this. So, Jake, I'm ready. What, what we're going to do here. I don't want. I'm, this is going to be a little segment. I think mm, this segment probably will stick. Will? It's you know what's stick. going on. It's probably going to go around the table a couple of times, too. <laughs> yeah, this is this. Yeah. <laughs> that's a good point. Yeah. <laughs> I fucking love this show, man, so much. Oh, I'm so happy so much right fun. now. So what we're going to be doing here is a little segment, Jake Simons. And, mm-hmm. you know, Jake Simons, I think this would be a great way. It's our first episode on, on YouTube. Mm-hmm. This is a great way to kick off the first ever episode. Well, this is a great way. I'm curious You're what this great I'm way is. Jake's well, facial expression right now. He does not know where this is going yet. Well, well, you feel good, right? Yeah. You're happy. Yeah. How excited are you for these drop for this drop? I am absolutely excited. Perfect. This game I did not know about before the podcast. But though. you like games, all right? I mean, uh, you, video games. No, but you like playing games. Like yeah. you come over to the house, we play Clue. Yeah. We play Uno my favorite sometimes. kind of game uh, is a game at my expense. So. Oh well, <laughs> hey, you're in luck. He's, Raul, he's going to be in luck. Hey, back to that. Though. When was the last time we actually played Clue? Oh, I actually burned the game. Yeah. Because my girlfriend would beat me all the time. I I burned the uh, Clue. It. That led to oh a lot of God. arguments. Yeah, There's actually, we almost broke up. We actually, all, Noel and I almost broke up legit oh. over um, Connect Four. <laughs> when you said beat you, I... <laughs> never mind. What? That's crazy. <laughs> all right, uh, so here we go. Oh, go ahead, Will. What were you going to say? I was just going to bring up that time I played Clue, and oh. like I just started like saying random shit at the beginning, yeah, and people you... wrote it down, and they yeah. actually thought I was serious, and it just ruined the whole game. Yeah, like literally, Noel yeah. was like, can you never invite that guy over the house? <laughs> we take Clue very serious in my fucking house. Apparently. All right, let's get into it. We need a, a you know what? I even have a nice little jingle for this uh, segment. Oh. This is called Gummy Roulette. I have a strange feeling that's not going to be the sound that represents whatever <laughs> sensation this is going to. Oh, yeah. No, you're going to hear the sound. <laughs> so for Jake Simons, for $5,000 cash. Oh, boy. There's a gummy here. You got the scary cherry, mm-hmm. the blood orange, and the haunted berry. Yes. One of those contains no delta in it. Bullshit. Two of them. Contain 200 milligrams. This is a trick, just, Will. Just, just real quick. No, Will, no, no, no. This no. Is a trick. That's why I said I said that this was hard to do because do you know what we had to jump through to be like, hey, we want a couple gummies, but without the THC in them. Mm-hmm. So without the Delta. So Jake Simons for five grand cash. Oh, wait, what? You, for five thousand dollars cash. <laughs> do you want to participate in Russian roulette? Russian gummy roulette. Will. No, this no, is, this is on you. This, <laughs> no, no, no. No, we're going to go around the room each week. So one yeah. of the gummies mm-hmm. doesn't have it. The other two got 200 milligrams per gummy. Oh. <laughs> Do I have to eat the whole one? Fuck yeah, you got to eat the whole Dude, one. Dude, I don't know, man, because uh, 
I'm like one of those people who takes like a small portion and that kind of like makes me go, you know, to the Mars and back. What so. if we do 2,500 for half? 2,500 for half. How about we do 800 for an A? For- <laughs> Come on, man. I don't know if I can. I do not think this is very smart right now to be playing this game. Do you accept it? Look, look, you don't have to. There's no pressure. You either want to do the game or not. Yes or no? You Am I boring if I say no? No. We're not. No pressure here. It's just. Let's no, because I've taken one of these. Yeah. Wait, are you playing? No, he's no, no, it's no, no, not, no, it's I'm not his day. It up. I'm it's not his day. Yeah, I'm just, just saying. Roulette. I'm just saying. On one condition, but it can only be a fourth. What's the, what's the money for a fourth? What's just dividing it by four? Yeah, it we're divided by four. Yeah. I also have a strange feeling every single one of these <laughs> has weed in it. I have a very good feeling. We this is that's fair. If we yeah, were like, I know chilling, you, you fucking. We're not going to do that on the podcast. I'm not going to do that on the show. On I need you. you, you I'm need- also playing Russian roulette here. Think about it. I'm also giving you five grand cash if you do it. But I'm also running the risk that you're gonna fucking eat the one with the delta in it. And if you do that, that's 200 milligrams. You're gonna be, uh, you're gonna be. It's gonna be two people gonna, on the show. There's gonna be two people <laughs> on the show, and we were down to two. Oh no, I don't want to do that. In my first episode. No? I'm gonna say politely no for now. Okay, so you decline. I want to be on my A game for this one. All right, we hear it there, folks. So this is where I wish we were live on Twitch because I would have everybody spam F in the chat for Jake. <laughs> but we'll just do this. Are you disappointed in me right now? There it Nobody's is. Nobody's disappointed. Hey, first ever uh, gummy roulette. Jake <laughs> Simon's decline. That's fair. You missed out on five grand cash. I'll get it another way. I like that. Okay. <laughs> I'm curious what everyone at this table is going to do when they're presented. Hmm. Oh, I got what? a good one for you or next guest, episode. Or yeah. a yeah. guest host. Can we play that game with a guest host? <laughs> we can play this game. We're going to play this game with everybody. That we okay, good. Gummy good. roulette. Good. Gummy roulette. So, Jake, now that you declined, I'm going to tell you what you fucked up on. Oh, boy. They all had they all had the Delta in it. <laughs> <laughs> so well, there's no way we can go to extracts. <laughs> I, I know. Like, I, know. Yeah. I, I knew. I knew it. It was a gut instinct. I am so glad. I that was a that was a good gut instinct, buddy. Thank you very much. All right. So here we are. Uh, we're, we're going to let's go. Let's any, anything else. Any uh, any other housekeeping here as we as we move on? What are you guys thinking? here? Anything else? I've got nothing. If you're not familiar with the show and this is your first time tuning in, all three of us grew up together. That is true. That's a good <laughs> shout, actually. That, that's a, that's I think a good, that's a great uh, conversation to be had right there. That is. I, th- I think about I that agree. daily. Like, how do we end up here? We yeah. grew up in the sticks. And it's kind of an understatement. <laughs> it's yeah. an understatement. Just, just Google Avella. PA. That's all you got to Google. Well, that's, I don't want to. Population 800 people. I think our class had like maybe 50. I don't even think we had that. I think it was like 40 some people. It this was is where well, I can fact check a little. Well, well we, here's what's here's what's great about Avella. This is mm-hmm. what I love about Avella. Uh-huh. So if you're not familiar with where we're at, we're in the tri-state area of West Virginia, Ohio, PA right there. Yes. But as we segue in here to Fright Night, you know, where we grew up, us three, we, we mentioned this on previous podcast. Mm-hmm. You know, us three were really the only people in our town that were into the metal music, the electronica music, you know, the rap music, the horror movies. That was us. Like, there was no real, I mean, I can maybe name like one or two other people. Maybe from one or two other people, maybe. but I, I'm not going to lie. I feel like when I was in like high school, like I did have like my friends. I was kind of like friends with everybody. I liked hanging out with everybody. Yeah. But I was like really into like, niche shit when it came time to me leaving school going home and like researching like indie bands and right. films that no one's ever heard of that had like low budgets and went straight to dvd like that was like my kind of thing well, one i remember you being obsessed with it because you can give like literally any detail mm-hmm. about it so like that's why you're perfect for this but what? i remember you being crazy into radiohead i am still <laughs> crazy, crazy into, into radiohead, radiohead. <laughs> Uh, I, 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 yeah, I think everybody knows me as the fanatic. You oh, love the radio. Yeah. 2010 census for Avella. Yeah. 782. 782 people in our hometown. I don't know if it's gone down or up. Like it could be down to 200. Well, people die. People die. So it's definitely going down, but then people, people are also, born. yeah, <laughs> Jesus. True. people are also making it's people. a circle life. Man. Yeah. It's a circle of life. Yeah. <laughs> so, so here, but here, but here's something special about where yeah. we're from. Right. I, I'm very grateful to be from where we're from. Mm-hmm. Uh, just growing up the way we got to grow up. I mean, look where we grew up. I mean, we're going to we be telling stories we didn't have throughout this podcast. We, none of us had way. a lot to where where we grew up, but mm-hmm. you know, it, it made us who we are today. So we're very grateful, very hardworking people from where we're from. 
I love that. It inspires me. I love going back there. It, it's just literally, I was just, well, we were just back there. It's super fucking inspiring to be back there. Actually. I'm about to be back there in a couple of weeks too. I used to look at it in such a like, Oh, I can't, I'm so happy I got out of this fucking place. But when I go back now, I'm in such a place of like peace. And I'm like, I I've grown so much as a person where I'm like, I'm so grateful I'm from here. And now that I'm going back there, like Will and I, we find ourselves doing things yeah. that remind us of back home, even out here in California, which is kind of funny. Well, especially since the visits, I think it's too, like we're always surrounded by people, love people, yep. always the best. But like when you go back home, that quiet serenity, you've got that. And then we don't get to see our families very much. No. So like all that, it's amazing. Yeah, It's a humbling experience. And honestly, every time I leave after visiting home, I just feel like I got rerooted. You know, that's actually which is way, absolutely a great way to put it. It's a, yeah. great, it's a great way to put it. So and and look, segueing here into Fright Night, what you know, what else Avella has done for us is is we are going to do black craft films one day. Oh, one thousand percent. And horror movies are our favorite genre. I'm mm-hmm. fucking terrified of horror movies. If you're if you're just watching this for the first time, a little <laughs> bit about myself. Uh, I had a home invasion actually happen where I grew up. So, I remember that night, man. So home invasions to me freak me the fuck out. So that's my favorite genre because it I, I lived it and it's fucking crazy. Uh, but where we're from, it's very it's all in the woods and and you could shoot the Blair Witch Project where we live easily. I mean, we we grew up on oh. a road called Shades of. Was Death. that movie Hush? With yeah, like hush, the house in the hush. Like that's that, that that's, where, like that's, that's yeah, where we. That's where we're. If from. you're curious how big our town is, uh, was it you, Will? It said in a previous episode of High Frequencies where you said literally the whole town is revolved around a Unimart. Yes, <laughs> uh, honestly, if you want to know what a Vela's like, it's like the movie The Village. <laughs> <laughs> that's a Metacraft. <laughs> It's I, like I the movie, the village. Village. We have it there. That's what I'm saying. I mean, legit. Like we have a village. Is, so, is Metalcroft like a Bella. nationally known thing? Oh like, yeah, it's like, it's huge. kind of like a big deal. It yeah, is really actually not. a big deal. Our, our goal, my goal, is to put a Vela on the map in a big way for horror movies. That would be fucking sick. And we're actually there was one horror film yeah. I, that we can go into. I think that was filmed in our town, like like about ten years ago. I think yeah. it's called Six Souls. Yeah, you keep saying that, but it's, I don't and know. And Julianne Moore is in it. Oh, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure that was filmed in our hometown. Wow. So 1,000% sure. Night of the Living Dead. Night of Living Dead. Some scenes were shot up in West Middletown. Oh, yeah. I used to drive uh, by the house every yep. day on the way to work when I worked at the casino. So that's what's great about where we're from. That's a little little thing. So thank you, everyone who's watching for the first time. If you're listening for the first time on Apple, Spotify, on YouTube, leave us some comments below. Leave us some love because, listen... My background, you know, I came from Twitch. I, you know, we we had one of the largest unsigned music shows on Twitch, and there was a lot of positivity there, which you know I'm grateful for. So let's keep let's keep it positive here, you know. And if you don't oh, know who yeah. I am, I'm one of the co-founders of Blackcraft Cult. Just a, that's a quick thing. So we're here, and and now we're moving into the smack smoke Blackcraft side of things, mm-hmm. which could not be any better. Which I want to talk about for a second here because we do yes. have a main sponsor. Before we get into Fright Night, oh yeah, we got a main sponsor of the show, Tubes Distribution. And we, and I, I'm so happy you guys are both here because you guys were in champs with me, but a quick thing on tubes distribution. So if you own a smoke shop or if you own a shop and you want to carry any of our products, mm-hmm. I'll put the link down below, or maybe we can get a fancy editor. Raul is looking at me like, hmm. He just gave, he gave me a thumbs <laughs> up. <laughs> coming. Gave me a thumbs up. Uh, like, you know how people do that? Like the trendy shit where you're like, right. Here and they make make that ding. Like click and like, subscribe or something so like that. So we're gonna send uh if you if you look right here. Did that work, Raul? Okay, perfect. <laughs> Thank you. So if you look right there, we're gonna drop the link for tubes distribution. That's T O O B S distribution. They're the, they're the main sponsor of the podcast. So if you own a smoke shop or want to carry us in any shop for the smoke black craft products, we got bongs, we got we got rolling trays, we got grinders, we got dab mats coming. We got merch. A fuck ton of smoke black craft Hell merch. Yeah. Smokeblackcraft.com will be up. But if you want to carry us in stores, it's tubes distribution. I want to talk about them real quick about our sponsor. Mm. So you guys are in Vegas with me. We we were at the Champs Trade Show, which by the way, if you're familiar with Champs, it's a it's a big smoke trade show, which will be in Atlantic City coming up yes. here next month. Or no, in May. Sorry, in May. It would be in May. May. Yes, May. yeah, May. Um, but Tubes really took us under their wing. They gave us a booth there at, at Champs, and it was just awesome. The whole coolest Tubes team, team ever, is the best ever. You can't say enough about their team. Like yeah. Kyle, yeah, Kyle, the owner, best dude on planet Earth. But his brother, his sales team, yep. Mm-hmm. Like those dudes. Like, there's not too many teams you're gonna find they're like willing to teach you, willing to hang out, and just like as approachable as they are. Like, yep. he's really got a great team there, which is why I think Tubes is as successful as it 100%. is. One hundred percent. And and to add to that, you know, we took, bro. I've sat through. I mean, well, you're with me through a lot. Sat through seven, eight, ten different meetings with distributors that were even offering us some advances, offering us different things. And to me, 
they weren't as passionate as tubes is they, mm -hmm. you know, cow and the team knew our brand. They understood our brand. They knew exactly how to place us. They're and metal heads. They, exactly. Mm -hmm. And, and when I say black crafts here to fuck up the smoke industry, we're here to fuck up the smoke industry. Like we're not coming in. Like we got a bong. We got a grant. No, we're here. Like we're not doing a box where it's just like, oh, here's a devil's lettuce box part, which we are going to do devil's lettuce parts. Taking part two. over. But we're coming here to fuck up the smoke industry. You, yes. you know, there's no, there's nothing out there what we're doing right now. We're first to market in this space. People could claim they were, but they're not. We're here. We fucking threw the stake in the ground. We're owning it. We're leaning in and we're fucking cruising. <laughs> so shout out Tubes Distribution. If you own a smoke shop, there you go. Hell yeah. Let's, uh, let's talk about the champs experience a little bit. You want to talk about it? Yeah. I'm down. Mm -hmm. Oh, was I was there. It's very, it's crazy diverse. <laughs> it goes from dead to super, super busy yeah. out yeah. of nowhere. And then there's a lot of stuff like there's a lot of gray area there. Like they're they're showing some products and stuff like that and some boosts where you're just kind of yeah. like, what's going on here? Yeah, someone came over and tried to uh, give me a penis enlargement pill. Yeah, and I said, Oh, I got one of those. Too. Bought this for a week, <laughs> and I'm like, Who the fuck would take this? I didn't get one. I didn't know that was the market here. <laughs> I definitely tried it. Did you? Yeah, nothing. Nothing but anyway. yet. Oh, boy, uh, what but, a disappointment. No, but, but you know what I loved about the Champs experience, uh, Will, to your point, to talk about it was I was so grateful and I was so like, I didn't know what to expect, right? Because I know Blackcraft in the apparel space, we're, we're, we're great. Things we're doing are crushing. Great we're very grateful. Thank you to everyone who supports the brand. Thank you for everyone being here watching the show. I really know what to expect in the smoke industry. I'm a, I'm a huge, I, I love weed. I, I quit drinking uh, six months ago, Will. Where am I at? Five, six months ago here? Five months. Five months, thank you. And my whole life has gotten better. I think we, I think alcohol to me, alcohol to me personally, I think it's just trash. I like there's, I can't even think back. Yeah, I've had some good times on alcohol, mm -hmm. but when I really boil it down to where I'm trying to go in my life and, and trying to, as busy as we are and everything, I'm 34 now. Hangover's fucking hit. One drink. I'm fucking hungover. Well, I I, I lose a week. <laughs> it, I bro, lose a week. Easily. If you, like, go out. Easily. It's a, a week gone. Like, around easily Thursday. A week even gone. if I'm going to the gym. Oh, yeah. Like, the gym's down. Yeah. I'm Everything's down. down. Yeah. Yeah. I was never a big drinker from the start. Oh, you're so lucky. You, you never really were. And But, so, moving into the weed space, I really didn't know what to expect. And and this is something I'm very passionate about. As we all know, I love weed. Mm -hmm. And and I was so blown away by how many people came up to the booth and knew our brand. And even smoke shop owners who were like, what are you doing here? And I was like, I don't know. Should I not be here? What am I in trouble? They're like, I can't believe black crafts in the smoke game. This is going to be crazy. And seeing it, sorry, but seeing it in stores and then stores reordering already yeah. is fucking the it, coolest thing in the world. It blew my mind too. And the, and the brand does get a lot of recognition, right? Like yeah. I'll be like an hour away in Ontario at FedEx. Someone sees black craft. They'll strike up a conversation, but whatever it's, yeah. it's FedEx and there's a lot of people out there, but for a space where, you know, everything's pastels, everything's graffiti, nothing's really metal. I didn't expect really anyone to know it there was a lot of fucking people that knew dude it. i i would say i mean getting with our distributor i mean we meet all the time you know at tubes and literally he's like it was it was about 80 20 80 percent of people didn't know us when they first sent it out to the, you know because you're talking the distributor of like thirty thousand plus stores mm -hmm. 80 20 you know and and shout out to tubes once again gotta give them their flowers on this we're in over 500 smoke shops already and it's been a month it's been a month but he wrote me the other day and he's like Bro, I got to be honest with you, and I'm not even blowing smoke up your ass. It's 50-50 now. I can't believe how many people know the fucking brand. Really? Yeah. So. Uh, to add to that, I've been doing events now for Blackcraft for about eight years, and I would travel from city to city. And on those off days, you'll just be walking around, checking out, like, different places that you've never experienced before. And Blackcraft is one of those brands where if you're wearing a T-shirt, it will literally have somebody across the street come and like yeah. wave you like dude i love that brand man like it is such a re the people who appreciate and love black craft will let you know that they hey i share this with you i love this brand too yeah, that's kind of how you know it's like a lifestyle brand because it's the same thing like like with the metal community if you're wearing a metal t-shirt somewhere and somebody knows that band and they know like you know not a lot of people know this band mm. they're always coming up to talk to you about perfect it. perfectly that's said it's treated like this cool niche band yeah. that you once you meet somebody else who knows about the band it's just like oh man let's talk about it right now well i mean look that's why jim and i started this brand in 2012 we wanted to create a family vibe that's why our slogan create your own future believe mm -hmm. in yourself we've always gone out of our way to try to create a family vibe with yep. the, with the brand. So I'm forever. We are so fucking grateful. Thank you to everyone who supports us. I can't say it enough. I can't, I literally cannot say enough. Also, I want to shout out our discord. Mm. I, I want to shout out the family that we've built inside this discord. Uh, just this past weekend, they had a benefit show for one of our club members who was diagnosed with, with cancer. And uh, it's been rough. It's, it's been a, it's, it's been a tough one. And, and they are two family members that 
of, of you know the black rat family to me that are so near and dear and, and mm-hmm. these people have done a lot for other people in the 666 club and and things like that so uh what what we're creating here is so much bigger you know i was, we was talking i was having this conversation with with the guys at delta extracts actually my partner's on the uh extract side of this or the delta side and we were we were just talking about money and what and and you know like oh we're gonna make you know we're gonna make some good money from these gummies and and the the ceo over at uh delta extracts He's like, man, you know, it wasn't me saying it, it was some other guys from their team saying about about how well they think the gummies are going to do. And he's like, you know, I think we've seen so many brands come through Delta Extracts here, mm-hmm. you know, through through their, you know, joint ventures. And they, I mean, they're the largest in the Delta space. There's nobody bigger than this company. They've seen everything. And he's like, what stands out to me about Blackcraft is, you know, when, when you pass on in life, right, you're going to take the brand, with, like the brand's going to live on. Oh, absolutely. And, and he's like, and I can't say that about many, many brands that could pass through here. And yeah, to me, it's just about that generational. I don't know if you want to use the word as wealth or I don't know what word I'm looking for here, but just, I don't know what, you know, I'm just, I don't know. I'm just grateful for what the, this has turned into because it's Jim and I never started this brand for money. It was always about the passion of just trying to create. We saw a niche where no one was doing like this kind of alternative lifestyle brand. And we saw a market, right, that needed to be served something other than the band tees. Mm-hmm. So it was never about the money for us. It was always about just creating a cool thing, helping people. I mean, the first 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 months, first year of the business, I mean, I was jumping on Zooms with kids. I was, mm-hmm. you know, I was calling random. I didn't care who it was. Like, yo, you reached out to me. Yo, your brand saved, saved me or whatever. I, I would pick up the phone and call them. Like, I would talk to whoever. And I still do today. And I think that's what's so special about Blackcraft, the, the community that is being built here. And, and I really got to shout out the 666 Club members uh, on the way they – if you're not in our Discord, come join our Discord. That's all I could really say. I, the, the perfect way for me to describe it when it comes to, like, Blackcraft Cult and the family that's been created in the past 10 years is that I always view that as a safe place for people who do not feel safe in the world. Yeah, that's, that's a good way to put it. I feel like that's a good way to put it, and I feel like, you know – that safe space allows people to express themselves the way they feel like they need to express themselves. And and and, and then as we segue in here to Fright Night, it's a perfect segue because literally growing up where we grew up, bring it back to Avella for a second, you know, we always were the outcasts. We always did stand out. <laughs> so I know that feeling growing up and that feeling fucking sucks growing up. It's, it, it's hard. Life's already hard enough, you know? So if, if you could come to Blackcraft and you could feel safe here and this is a safe space, that's what we, that's, that's a victory to me. You know, oh, absolutely. So, uh, we see you. We love you all. Appreciate it. Jake Simons, are you ready? Oh boy, Will, you ready? I'm ready. That was, that was some that was some heavy housekeeping, but I feel like we need to do that for first episode. So I oh, good. absolutely, especially with the video portion being in, incorporated. There we I go. did that on every mm-hmm. episode. Yeah. yeah, I would. You would? I would. You'd give it all that? I would give it all that. I mean, but it's the same thing Will. to me. <laughs> I would give it all that. But you I would give it all that. Yeah, you would give it all that. You do give it all that. William. All right, man. Well, here we go. Here we go. Episode 19. Yeah. Uh, We're doing Scream, technically Scream 5, 2022, uh, but they called it Scream and they referred to it as a requel, requel. which is a very interesting term that we're probably going to discuss here in a little bit. Um, So, yeah. uh, Scream 5, 2022, starring Nev Campbell, David Arquette, Courtney Cox, Melissa Barrera, Jenna Ortega, Jack Quaid, Mason Gooding, Mikey Madison, Dylan Minette, Jasmine Savoy Brown, and many more. There's just, there's a lot of people in this movie. I would say. And it's directed by Matt Bettinelli, Open, and Tyler Gillette. And here's here's what I loved about the movie. Yeah. And I know all three of us love this about the movie because <laughs> our ADD ass. I could see, our, Will, Will's already thinking about what he's going to have for dinner right now. I'm zoning out a little bit. Yeah, there you go. He's exhausted. Come on, on. (laughs) snap back in. He is exhausted right now. The laptop screen is off. (laughs) Movie length? 114 minutes. minutes. There we go, Anything under two hours, baby, is a good good time for Um, us. (laughs) uh, uh, How do you guys feel, uh, Will? How do you feel about the critic score at 76%? This is from Rotten Tomatoes, and we got 82% audience score. How are you feeling about that? I mean, I feel like it's... mm, Let me think about it. I feel like it's pretty spot on for this reason. It's like the, the, the scream stuff like everything you want from it, it's in there. Mm-hmm. Like whether or not like like the reveals at the end, the breakdown of the structure of like how a, a slasher movie works. And then it always has that fun undertone to it to where you're not taking it, you're taking it seriously, but it's still just like a blast to go through and it has mm-hmm. all that. Plus the massive cast because they're just, you know, killing True. people like crazy. True. I think it's very fair. I yeah. think it's a very fair representation of where this movie sits with everyone. Um, 
I do too, actually. I, yeah. I really think this is solid because technically for a horror movie, when it comes to critic scores, usually horror movies usually have a bit of a bias against it and critics tend to rate it lower than usual. Uh, but for this, this is fairly high actually for a horror film. Yeah. And I like it. I mean, I mean, moving down to the budget box office here. Mm, now, this is where, this is your will. This is what right gets here. me excited, man. So 24 million budget mm -hmm. box office brought in over 140 million. Oh boy. That's a fucking, that's an ROI. And with that's the, an ROI. And with the fifth movie in the franchise still bringing in that kind of money. Yeah. Well, I think the gap probably helped with that too. Oh yeah, there you was know, like, like a there was like a ten year gap gap every year. Like they did that with Saw. And I'm not shitting on it or anything, but like at some point you're like, I yeah. haven't even seen the last one yet. Yeah, that's fair. That's <laughs> yeah. actually they're they're really feeding those movies out. But yeah, the the I think Scream Four was released back in 2011, mm -hmm. so that's a pretty big gap between. And it makes sense that they would do like a startup, like a reboot, Scream, right? Not Scream Five, but Scream again because it was such a big break. So that makes a lot of sense to me. Yeah. Um, as far as where to view it, you can watch it for free on Paramount Plus, mm -hmm. or if you don't have Paramount Plus, you can buy it for five or rent it for five dollars on like Amazon. Yeah. So, and I think that's what we did, right? We, you are notorious for using my Amazon account. Yeah. Whoop. Wait, what? Oh, I don't do that. I don't. I don't. I don't no, that's not true. <laughs> I'm guilty of that too. Yeah, I'm right. not talking shit. Wait no, a second. Know, do you yeah, buy yeah, movies on that? Yeah, he. This motherfucker. I'm like. Does he notify you? you? No. He doesn't ask for permission. Oh shit! Sorry, bro. I must have. Asked. I thought yeah. I was locked so in. Put my credit card I'll, information Will's on. Will's always, hey. always think he's hey, fucking I'll, I'll locked Venmo in. You I keep on right. forgetting to put my email on it. Sorry, man. That's it, man. So, all right. Well, here we go. Scream five, Jake. We're oh, going. Bro, are we're, you kidding me? Are you fuck? <laughs> you're, you're not reading all this, bro. We're going into death by spoilers. So if you have not seen, bro. what? Come on, man. A lot happens in this movie. Bro, no one wants to fucking hear all this, this right now. This is a refresher for people who may have not seen it since last year. This I needed the refresher when I saw it in a week. I don't know, like, podcast appropriate, but, I like, swear, definitely I needed this before If I show. start reading this and you guys start going, <sighs> All right, we, no. will, we will not do that. I'm inhaling already. Yeah. Okay, Jake, you put a lot of work into the Fright so, Night footnotes. Death You're really going to do by this. spoilers, if you haven't seen it, please tune out now. Go watch the movie and then come back and see if you feel the same way we feel about this movie. Uh, Fright Night footnotes for Scream 5. Holy fuck. Oh, Bear shut with us. up. If you fall asleep during this, I apologize. Whatever. I would oh. say fast forward about 40 <laughs> minutes. <laughs> I'm actually going to time you and see how long this takes. Hold on. We're going to do this here. Because this is fucking ridiculous. Come on, bro. man. You're making me feel like uncomfortable now. Are you ready, Jake? I put a lot of time into this. this. Oh, we fucking know. Are you oh. ready, Jake? In three. God damn it. Two. All right. Uh, hey, hey, Will, you want to bet? Let's do an over under. I'm, I'm down to gamble. I haven't gambled in a minute. Don't make, me, don't make me read fast because no, I'll read fast gotta just read, to beat that. You got to read uh, at a normal pace. Yeah, you got to read. Close your fucking ears. Wait, Take off what your are headset. we over undering on? Like what time? Uh, I'm going to, all right, I'm going to say three minutes, I feel like, is a good over under. You think? Yeah. Because three minutes is a while, but there's a lot of fucking. No, time. let's say five minutes. So, because if, if it goes over three minutes, then you guys are going to be like, oh, God, man, come on. No, we're gambling, right? That's not how gambling there's works. There's no way I this don't is gamble. Be five minutes, though. Uh, I, I, got, I got him under three minutes. Fuck, I want it under. All right, I'll take the over. Fuck it, I'll take the over. Okay. All okay, right. Okay. Are right, you ready? <laughs> In three. This is some pressure right two. here. Hey, you want to you want to buy half? <laughs> you want to buy uh, two thirty? Let's do two thirty. It's for sure two not going to be under two, two minutes, minutes and thirty, and 30 because, seconds. Because hey, when when you just, said when you said I had under, I was like, I fucking won this, and now two thirty makes me a little nervous. All it's right, a better you, bet. Let's go. All right, yeah, you, you down? Yeah, I'm down. All right, you got two thirty. You got the under. Neither one of you trust me. <laughs> this is for dinner tonight. Here we go. All right, In three, that's fair. Two, one. Opening scene begins with Tara, played by Jenna Ortega, receiving an ominous phone call by a man who states he knows her mother through group. Faster. But the, what? Faster, please. You can't talk. You cannot talk. Bro, you're Sorry. just lagging it. Oh, you just, you you're just, just lagging up. it, bro. But the call turns into a conversation about horror movies in good old scream fashion. As Ghostface reveals his true intentions and threatens to kill her friend Amber, who's in a nearby home, he attacks Tara inside the house in a relentless stabbing spree. You're speaking spree. way too fast. You we are then introduced to Sam, played by Melissa Barella, and her boyfriend, Richie, played by Jack Quaid, in which she receives a call from Wes, played by Dylan Minette, stating her sister was attacked. Soon after, Sam visits her sister in the hospital along with the rest of her friends. 
While at the bar, Amber, played by Mikey Madison, states her reservations about Sam leaving her sister behind at 18 years old. And after a brief altercation involving a man named Vince, played by Kyle Gallner, Vince is immediately killed afterwards by Ghostface outside of his car. Sam is then attacked in the hospital and soon confesses to her sister that she is the daughter of Billy Loomis. Sam seeks out Dewey, played by David Arquette, who we find out is no longer together with Gail Weathers, played by Courtney Cox, and has retired as a police officer, but more importantly, explains the calculations of the killer to Sam and Richie. Dewey then notifies Sydney, played by Nev Campbell, that it's happening again, happening again through a phone call. Everyone th that then meets at the Meeks house, Randy Meeks, and talks about the probabilities of who the killer is, the concept of a requel, elevated whore, and crazy fanatics of the Stab franchise. While Sam is battling her demons of Billy through hallucinations, Officer Hicks, played by Marley Shelton, and her son unfortunately come in contact with Ghostface himself, ending badly for both of them in broad daylight. Gail shows up at the site of the murders to meet Sam and reunites with Dewey. Tension and awkward energy is showcased between them as, the, as they bicker like an old couple. But once Sam realizes that all police are at the scene, she rushes back to the hospital because her sister is unattended. But it's too late. Ghostface is there and attacks her as well as Richie, who goes to check in on her. But Dewey shoots Ghostface and proceeds to stay behind to shoot the killer in the head, but is distracted by a call from Gail, ultimately leading to his death with the words being uttered by Ghostface, it was an honor. Sydney hears of the news of Dewey and comes back into town, but after a heated conversation with Sam and the former survivors of the original Ghostface, Sam leaves with Richie and Tara to get out of town. But we soon find out that we must retrieve Tara, Spare, and Heller from Amber's house. And in Scream movie fashion, we enter the final party scene where it came to be, uh, where it came... Oh, wait, what did I say here? Where it, <laughs> where can, can, be where it can be anybody. anybody. Where it can Come be on, anybody. Jake. Sorry. First, it starts with an attack on Chad, played by Jason uh, Mason Gooding. Then Amber chooses to kick everyone out of the house once Tara arrives at the house. But shit goes to hell when Mindy, played by Jasmine Savoy Brown, is attacked in a weird inception fashion that parallels her late uncle. But as Liv, played by Sonia Amar, runs back into the house to tell them about Chad's attack, Amber reveals herself as the killer and shoots her in the head. As Sydney and Gal arrive at the house, Amber pretends to be injured and shoots Gal. After Ghostface attacks Sydney, Richie reveals himself as, as the other killer by stabbing Sam. Amber and Richie reveal themselves um, as a couple and go off on a fanatical tangent about Stab franchise and its hardly critical fan base. In a chain of events, Tara attacks Amber, Amber is shot by Gal and burned alive from sanitizer in a stove. Sam, in survival fashion, stabs Richie to death, and as Aber makes one final attempt to kill them, Tara shoots her while saying, I still prefer the Babadook. In its final moments, we find out the twins survived, and we end the final image of Stu's house in the end credits. A lot longer so, than I two. Didn't a fucking so chance. if anybody uh, is still here listening or watching <laughs> the show, that oh, was uh, you're making me feel bad. Three minutes and fifty five seconds. Well, we learned something today. Let's never make it that long ever again. A lot happens. I, I needed this refresher before the show. That was a good sure. refresher, so, right? It, it was great. It was Thank great. you. I'll give you that. Okay. But we how, don't have long, to do it this long. How long was that? Three minutes and 55 seconds. So I lost either way. Yeah, you were fucked. I was completely fucked yeah, see, on that. See, you didn't know there was a second page where I knew it. <laughs> you didn't do your research. <laughs> oh, I found it, yeah. yeah. I went into that blind. I was impulsive. You know what? I'm not going to lie. Once I reached like halfway through, I was like, damn, Will's losing. And Will's I'm fucked. even starting to feel the well, pressure. There was, a point, there was a point where I was, yeah. like, I was like looking like halfway on the page. I'm like, where's he at? Maybe he's closer to the bottom. I, got it. I looked up. It was like you line three. Fall. And I was like, God, yeah. damn. <laughs> line three? That's when you started asking where I was at. <laughs> so, so, Jake, let's go into uh, the segment here, a little the campfire story. Let's talk about the plot. We're going to talk about the originality of the movie, the mm -hmm. plot. And the theories. Mm. Let's start with you, Bobby. What are your thoughts on the plot for Scream 5? I uh, love the plot of Scream 5. I love this movie. The Scream franchise is probably... Damn, this is on record. This is like video record, too. I'm going to go ahead and say this is probably my favorite horror franchise. Oof. Yeah. yeah. Let's not do that, Will. That's bothering me. Thank you. Yeah, let's We're put good. your anxiety There we rest. go. Yeah. Because you know what I'm going to start doing? I'm going to start... Let's not do that. There yep. Your anxiety is awesome. Do I need the awesome. fucking job? Do I need the pen? No. Do no. I take I'm, I'm going to be responsible. One oh, more time, okay. you get the pen. Okay. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> but screw <laughs> It's going to happen. Yeah, it's going to happen. Uh, you want to take a bet on that, Jake? Uh, fuck, yeah. I'll bet. All right, how much? Uh, 
Five I got I got ten I got ten bucks. Will okay, picks that pen bucks. back up before the end. Okay, of the ten dollars. Okay. Oh, I'm picking it back up. We're just not. No, you're gonna it. tap it. Ten dollars. Oh, yeah. yeah. All right. All right. Um, love the originality. Mm-hmm. Love the plot. Love this fucking movie. I love this franchise. I'm a fan. It's very much a screen plot. It, it, but course. they did they did some cool stuff there because uh, when we get introduced to Mindy's character and she gives like all like, hey, this is what the Stab franchise is all yeah. about, which technically Stab is a parallel to the real life events that's right. going on. It was really cool how she just talked about the requel aspect and how it's a reboot and we're dealing with similar scenarios of the first movie again. And, and for me, I mean, a spoiler, we're already in spoiler territory here. Yeah. What I loved about this movie was they take you back to the first house. Yeah. They take you back to where everything started. And that just took me back to when I was like, I don't even know how fucking old I was when Scream came out. Mm-hmm. Oh, shit. That was what, 95, 96 or something I mean, like that? I mean, so was that what year it came out? I don't, I, can I, you, I don't can you fact that. check that real I quick? Fact check that. Let's fact check I that. was young when that. It, I only think it, I was old enough to like watch that when it came out. But it took me back. Oh, absolutely. And you know what's 96. funny, too? 96. Because, uh, you know, we can talk about it now is... When you find out it is the house and it like hits you, you're like, oh shit. Yeah, that shit hit like that gummy low key. <laughs> I felt like that movie was super self aware, like with a lot of the dialogue. That's usually what Scream is, is yeah. very self aware. But I was surprised like they brought the legacy char- characters back, had the new ones, but it felt fresh. It felt super fresh. I agree. Yeah. I agree it with that. It didn't feel tired. It did not feel tired. I agree. I, I know agree. some people feel like the franchise is tired, but I mean, when you're dealing with a franchise, you should know what you're getting yourself into, you know? And I think when it comes to the Scream franchise, I feel like they've always been super consistent. Yeah. I always feel like it was a super consistent franchise. That's, that's why literally this is my favorite franchise ever. And I'm so stoked that we're doing it with our first, like our first video episode too. Yeah. And this is kind of like meant to be. Well, we were, you and I were going back and forth on when the video comes out. So, uh, a, qu- a quick snippet here. You are going to get back-to-back episodes from us. So we're doing Scream 5, and then you're going to get Scream 6. Oh, absolutely. So that's how we're kicking off the video. I like it. Uh, let's go into the villain protocol. Ghost face, baby. Let's, let's talk about the likes, the dislikes, the aesthetic. I mean, come on. The scare factor. <laughs> come on. Uh, and the creativity, which... There's a lot to dissect here in Scream 5. So obviously, we end up finding out that there's two ghost face, right? So obviously, double the ghost face, double the scare. Um, what were your thoughts on Ghostface mannerisms in this? It seems like he was a little bit more malicious this time around. Ghostface had, I mean, Ghostface always got something to prove, but yeah, you're right. There was, there was, there was a malicious intent here. I feel like the violence was more in your face. I feel like the stabbing seemed a lot more painful in this than previous installments. Yeah, a lot would, of knife twists. I would say that. There's a lot of there's, knife there's twists. Some, there's, there's, knife, sounds. there's lots of blood. There's lots of people getting stabbed multiple times, somehow surviving. <laughs> yeah, I, that's, that's kind of the thing, because there's definitely some characters in there that have, like, a, you know, their health bar is a little bit bigger than the other guys. You know? <laughs> I know. There's always, uh, there's always, the lead characters always have a lot bigger health bars than yeah. the side characters. Yeah. And that's, that's, that stands true to Especially does. that ending. The, the ending to me <laughs> is out of control. It, it just, it, that stuff drives my mind insane. L- like to what, like elaborate on it a little well, bit. Well, like, like, so like you're already like, you know, kind of given up a little, it's a slasher movie. You know, the characters are going to be kind of dumb yeah. a little bit in certain things just so the character can go, but, or just so the story can go. Sorry. But you have that last scene where Courtney Cox and the other girl kill the girl, like the, the girl killer, the side, the side chick, Amber, uh, Amber. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. The names, the names are gone on me. Yeah, so, you I, with me. <laughs> so they kill her. Right. And you're like, thank God. Now there's just the dude killer left the boyfriend. Uh-huh. So that's a three on one situation. And his girlfriend, the main character, she's been stabbed in the stomach with a chef's knife and yes. it's been twisted. Yes. You say, okay. Mm-hmm. So they're all going to come. They're going to help her out. Right. They have an entire battle on the staircase where she overtakes them. And it's loud, stuff. too. There's gunshots and, gun it's and it's everything. lengthy. <laughs> she falls down those steps. Yeah. She somehow gets the upper hand, stabs him 40 times. Yeah. And the other two just kind of come strolling in after that. Like they just have okay. like fucking teeth. Hold on. Yeah. I, I'm surprised that that's where you started noticing that because literally the first scene with Jenna, Jenna Ortega's character, Tara, she oh, yeah. gets fucked <laughs> up. Yeah, that, she dude, she gets stabbed like four freaking times and she survives. Does this make sense? I think like the patients kind of ran out a little bit there. You think? Yeah. You already give a lot. <laughs> for, for me too. Yeah. I'm like, okay. 
This is when, you, when it, that battle scene was so fucking out of control. It was a great battle scene. <laughs> I mean, like I'm just thinking, like it was great. Like, it was just yeah. It was okay. I don't. I don't think it was. A I battle. I, didn't, I didn't really. I didn't really enjoy it for the fact of the things you're talking about. It like, gives me anxiety. If that was Where you, yeah, we would be there. Yeah, like you know, chaotic is the perfect word to describe the ending of the movie. I did think it yeah. get a little bit chaotic. I actually think the beginning of the movie that that was a lot more poised and i think there's a lot more intensity in that part but that's how all scream movie, that's how all scream movies start though and what's really cool about scream the recall is that the first victim of the movie doesn't actually die this time they survive and true. we ended up finding out it's a ploy right that's why they didn't kill her off no that's true I thought that was pretty cool. All right, Jake. Well, let's talk about the protagonist survival guide here. Let's mm. get into it. Let's uh, talk so, about two people. Yeah, well, there's two. Well, actually, two. Let's talk about five people. We got five. Yeah, we got Tara and Sam, sisters. Okay. And then we got the originals. We got David Arquette, Nev yeah. Campbell, um, Courtney hey, Cox. Hey, R.I.P. Dewey. <laughs> yeah, Dewey. Hey, R.I.P. Dewey. No. P. Dewey. Oh, let's talk about Sam and Tara first. What, what do you, how you feel about them as like a dynamic as, you know, as their personalities, how you feel about these? Cause it seems like they're setting these two up to be kind of like the new final girls of the series. I don't know. I didn't really have thoughts on it. Is that weird? I didn't really think, I, I didn't really, I don't know. I didn't, I don't no, know. Like, I mean, I think like the two sisters like together, like they have good chemistry on stage. Like it's fun to watch them. Yeah. They, they, they kill it. But like, I didn't think anything like really crazy stood out about it. Same. I want to bring well, this well, up. Well, I mean, what stood out to you? Cause you're the reason, the reason I want to talk about them specifically. I want, let's talk about Sam real quick. What are your thoughts on Sam? Cause she's technically Billy Loomis's daughter. Right. What are your thoughts on her having hallucinations? I throughout? love it. You I do. Think, I fucking think it's great because uh -huh. you know, it's her dad Uh huh. and her dad was the killer, which, you know, you'll, I can't talk about too much here because we just saw Scream I, Six. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. I like the flashbacks. I, I think, or the uh, not the flashbacks. The technically, I guess. hallucinations. Her, her, yeah, I like I like the hallucinations a lot. I love Sam. Uh -huh. I think her character's fucking ten out of ten. Mm -hmm. I'm like obsessed with her character. Love it. I will say, I actually didn't care for the hallucination scene. Really? How come? Um, you know, I just wasn't feeling it. I, I I don't know what it was. I think it's just because I don't think in the whole entire franchise have we ever had a character that we actually see on screen then hallucinate. So well, she's also like taking pills and shit too. I this thought. This is I, I thought I possibly yeah. she's been I, through some shit. Yeah, she's been through some shit. She bro. has been through some shit. She and might I do be taking one of that. our gummies, low key. Well, she ends up finding out as a teenager that she is the daughter daughter of Billy and Loomis, right. and apparently it caused all this discord within the family. Um, what are your thoughts on Sam? To both, your, I, I like Sam, but to both your points on this thing, mm -hmm. I think I, I have to like either give or take one of the things, and like because there was a lot of slow dialogue parts in there where they were like trying to build the, suspense, the character which development lost me a little bit. Yeah, but, like, yeah, but it was a, it was a little much for me, especially yeah. for for a scream movie. That's fair. But either either have the flashbacks or have those kind of suspense building moments, but both of them together, like mm -hmm. it, it kind of lost me a little bit. I get that. I, I get that. I, I think I like it because I am a father, you mm -hmm. know, to my to a seven year old daughter, you know, and I just think I don't know, kind of kind of hits a little different. Like thinking like if I'm dead and my daughter see, I don't know. I just I, there's it's it's kind of hard to explain unless you're a father no. Figure. I get it, and I actually also genuinely love the little sister. I think Tara oh, yeah. really killed it, and I I really like Jenna Ortega. And, and she's she's Wednesday Adams. She's she she's blowing like, the fuck up. She right crushes now. in like every role. She's, she's she, Wednesday Adams. Yeah, right? she's a very solid actress. Crazy. I don't think I've seen a bad performance from her yet. Um, okay, and now let's talk about like the OGs. Let's talk about. Oh Nef man, Cam let's talk about Cindy, <sighs> just Dewey, about Dewey man. and we Gal. Just, I mean, I, Gail, I always love. Gail, I love Gail too. Gail, man, I Gail's, love all three of them. But look, let's let's get into it here, man. I mean, as you see in our background here, we got scary movie. So, <laughs> Officer Doofy. What, what did you Remember do? Officer Doofy? <laughs> I know Officer Doofy. <laughs> um, I need a refresher so much because I barely remember scary Dewey's, movie. You barely, oh, what? Dude, well, dude, dude I watch this movie like at least this once a year. This is the best movie in the world, dude. I'm going I'm going as as uh, Ghostface High. That's, that's going to be my costume for Halloween. And it gave but us Anna Faris. Dewey, so. Seeing Dewey die like this, I'm not going to lie, man. I don't think I've ever cried during a movie. Oh. That fucked me up. That made me sad. There were tears. That took me back to 96. Is that what, that's what yours came out, right? The original 96? 96. When I saw this in uh, theaters, because I saw it when it came out last year. People were sad, I bet. I got teary-eyed. There was moans and groans in the Give me theater. an example of a moan like, and groan. Like, uh, what was it like? Like, oh. Uh, okay, give me a, give me a moan. Uh, give me a groan. Uh, <laughs> 
that's I don't know. Similar. I don't dude, think that's what act, people were doing. Dude, I, I'm just saying people were reacting to it. Okay. How, how could how you did not you react, react to it? I, I got teary eyed. My eyes watered up. So I was like, fuck, man. Like, this is kind of a part of my growing up. Like, right. Dewey was a legacy in this franchise. Of course, that's who you think of. Right. I got teary eyed because I love this franchise. I wasn't ready for him to go, but then I completely understand why he did go. Like, I get it. At some point, you kind of have to just go. pass the torch a little bit. And I feel like that's kind of what's going on right now. I feel like they nailed it. Like, can I jump the gun and say that was my favorite kill? Am I allowed to do that? Because well, we'll, get, we'll get to it. Because I also want to talk about um, uh, Cindy. What yeah, are your thoughts? Jumping on, the gun. Yeah, you're hey, jumping if the you gun. You jump the gun because we don't follow I'm sorry. his fucking thing. <laughs> oh. Also, we are not gonna, have no fury. Yeah. We're not skipping over Cindy and Gal. It would be blasphemy if we don't That's talk fair. about That's them. Fair. That's Let's fair. talk okay. about. Okay. We got it. We got it. Okay. I'm sorry. Let's I talk, am so sorry. We'll talk about Gal next, then, and then we'll do Cindy last. Hey, whatever you want to do, man. We're here. Stop it. Go ahead. What are your thoughts on Gal in this movie? Incredible. I Incredible. Mean, what, I mean, what what is there really to say about Cindy and Gail? She's like one of those people that you like kind of hate because she's like an opportunist every time it comes to a terrible tragedy. But at the same time, she kind of cares a lot about it too. But it's, but it's relatability, right? We could all, we all know someone in our life that's like that to some degree. And on top of it, if you have a job of why would you not cover a case that you are like, You're so like emotionally intertwined with You're it? a reporter. You're a reporter. You got to stick to your job. That's it. I really like Gail in this one. Uh, Cindy. What do you think's on Cindy in this one? Because we don't get introduced to her until like later in the it's, movie. It's later in the movie. Wait, when when they showed Cindy, was there everyone clapping in the movie theater? Oh, absolutely. Really? There, there was a couple of claps. I wouldn't say a lot of claps. Did you clap? Well, what did you think of Cindy when she when she came in? I was excited to see her. Yeah. I think it was cool to see her in a different environment. Mm. Like she's not in that town anymore. I thought that was pretty cool. I did like that. Uh, but. They kind of they kind of like trick you a little bit because you think she's going to get heavily involved right away. And she's like, no, I'm not coming back to that town. I'm not. And so you think she's just going to have this kind of like small cameo and that she's not going to come back. But then she's back. But that's what the killer was intended. He's like, the only way we can get the original Mm -hmm. Cindy Prescott to come back is if we kill. You owe me 10 bucks. Do we? You owe me 10 bucks. Wait. You did it. What did I bet? You said he wouldn't do it. What? You said you wouldn't. I wouldn't. He, and he did it. Pen. I didn't? Pen. Yeah, see, yeah. this is the ADD show now. So here we go. I don't know what you're talking about. All right, about so right go on. Do I don't we? remember go this ahead. bet. So, um, yeah, so I think Cindy was a badass at the end of the movie. I also like how she has become, like, the guru of her own legacy, too. Like, she I knows agree. what to expect. She knows to have a gun. She knows to not trust anybody. I really love that she is just so self, like, like she's so very a badass badass and yep. knows what to expect. I freaking love Cindy in this movie. It's very well said. I, I think, or did know, I say Cindy or Sydney? You said Cindy. Cindy. Oopsie. I mean, I, I said <laughs> threw Cindy. me off so bad at first. Yeah. <laughs> whoopsie, whoopsie. Is it Cindy or Sydney, Jake? Which one? Sydney. There you go. Sorry. Whoopsie. So, so moving on here, I want to talk about the soundtrack. Cause this is, you know, we, we are, this is a music podcast also. Mm-hmm. And uh, coming up here in a little bit, we are going to be playing some unsigned bands. We're going to be hanging out and, and I want to have a talk with you guys. Cause I have an idea. I want to talk about unsigned bands. Yes. We'll, we'll say that when we get there, but uh, soundtrack to the Scream movie, you know, what? what's your thoughts on Very it? classic, old school, yeah. same kind of very similar to the soundtrack as the original. And you know what? I like it. I yeah. like that they keep yeah. it to the roots. It's, me, me too. It's funny. Um, it keeps to the theme. And I think I said during the actual show too, like the sound effects. Very oh, 90s, yeah. The very sound 90s. design is amazing in this movie. I, I, I definitely fucking agree. So we're, we're all in agreement there. I, I, I on agreement there. Um, yeah. Yeah, I don't even want to. I don't even have to go more no, into no, it. No, I think it, I it, think it did ex- fright. It did exactly what it needed to yep. do. Uh, well, let's jump into it. So, Will, your favorite death, Dewey? Because listen, I'm gonna let you riff on it because this is your time to shine, baby. But I'm with you. Yeah, well, I, like the thing with Dewey, like nobody wanted to see it happen, right? No, I didn't happened, want to see it happen. When it happened, like you actually cried, right, Jake? It was I got teary. I got teary eyed. Yeah. To me, if it's impactful like that, and I'm bummed. Yeah. They nailed their job. I agree. Mm-hmm. I agree. I, I yeah. What well, what I was trying to think on on this segment is like, hmm, what was the worst death? I I kind of feel like all the Scream franchises. I don't think there's any terrible deaths. I think every death is painful to look at because well, the idea be the of worst death for this one. Yeah, I wouldn't have we one. don't have to do a worst death. I think we should just talk about our favorite ones on this one, bro. You know what do other we? one I loved? Which one was was the girl killer when she with the fire. With the gas on in the stove. She uh, technically didn't die from that, though. I, well, that's true. She died true. by the gunshot. But I will say I do like where all of a sudden she Amber just pit, pulls up a gun, just Sick. shoots that girl right. right in the head. You don't Sick. expect that. No. But I actually think my favorite kill is Wes 
uh, the kid where he's like showering and then his mom's like police officer and stuff like that. And she gets killed out in front of the door. Yeah, she's like running into the house and he's just like. And he turns around. He gets the knife into the neck and you see the neck go in and Uh out the other end. I thought that was a really effective kill and very just like uncomfortable to watch. Yeah. Yeah. That's a I would choice. say that's my favorite one outside of Dewey because Dewey's obviously the number one here. Yeah. And, and you know, moving on to the vibe test here. Mm. What, uh, let, what, let's talk about. So, favorite and least favorite character, love, lovable or disposable? Yeah. Lovable or disposable. What do you, what do you got, Mr. Jake Simons? Mm, I think my favorite character in this one would have to be, I'm, I'm going to say Tara or, t- yeah, Tara because, uh, I don't know. I just feel like Jenna Ortega really killed it with that she character did. she did and she did she gets fucked up at the beginning of the movie she almost gets fucked up at the middle of the movie at the hospital and then at the end of the movie she gets kind of fucked up again but she keeps pushing through yeah. that, that that she just she fucking killed it i i really like jenna ortega's character in this movie i would uh, say she's my favorite I, for me i'm gonna go next if you don't mind mm-hmm. the boyfriend richie oh i loved richie's character I, I love i love when he was in the car when uh she forgot the inhaler and uh-huh. he was back at the house, and he's like, yep. "There's no fucking like." He was just, pl- I he just, did a great job, great fucking job, pretending to be supportive, and, supportive, and, yes. and it is that is a fucking surprise at the movie. It, I'm not gonna lie, that, that I did not me. see that coming. Like, I'm we're a gambling man. I'm I'm two for two today. <laughs> I would have lost here because I would not think that was the killer. Well, they kind of get you because, like, when Dewey's sitting there and he's like, "Never trust the love interest." It almost seems like it's gonna be two offers. It's, it's too obvious. Fucking, yeah, yeah. yeah. If, bro, that's how le- they flip it on bro, you. Bro, legit, yeah. legit. When that, I was like, "Well, it's definitely not the boyfriend," because yeah. because they emphasize that so yeah. hard. And what's really cool about Richie too is that he makes himself look like he's just exposing himself to the stab franchise. And he's like, "Yeah, man, th- you're right. This franchise like gets kind of bad and blah blah blah." But really, yeah. he's just obsessed with the franchise and just watches this over and over and over again yep i think that was pretty cool about yep. him yeah, um, that's, that's all fair who's your favorite man i i can't agree like we can't agree twice on something i feel like we can i'm gonna uh, but I, i'll go with sam i thought she just did a great job like like with the leading role yeah really holding it together it's a badass minus the the last name where she was a badass it just didn't make a ton of sense to me <laughs> but uh but i thought she nailed it oh, absolutely and nothing against to like the you know the guys you know that have been around since the first movie but i just feel like when it comes to the newer cast i really think they did a great job with the newer cast they did. in this movie and, and and what i'll tell you what's great about scream 5 actually i'm gonna save it for a second because <laughs> i got some good and bad things to say about scream 5 but i'm gonna save it I'm gonna who save was it. your least favorite character who was like hmm you know what not convincing or when we be honest yeah I thought, okay, I'm, I'm a sp- here's my little spoiler alert. <laughs> I thought Scream 5 did a great fucking job. Uh, it's very hard for me to pay attention to things and to get lost into things. And yeah. when I get lost into things, I'm all in. Scream 5 did that for me. I got I got lost I, I, I in a good way. I, yeah. I kind of forgot about everything I'm going through in life or business shit or any shit. I was all in. And this movie really grabbed me in. I thought all the characters personally were mm-hmm. 10 out of fucking 10. There, what, there wouldn't be one thing, you know, because I know we're going to segue in here to like what our favorite <laughs> scenes are, right? And then we go into lights on, lights off. So I'm a little jumping the gun here, but let's just let's just roll. No, let's of course, roll. Let's no, roll. let's roll. With let's it. just roll. Let's just speed it up here and roll up for a second. So I think this movie's ten out of ten. I got lost in the whole thing, you know, going into my favorite scene. It, it's 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 so easy. I mean, I think we're all going to have the same favorite scene, uh, at least for we'll me. We'll see. I love when you come back to the beginning. You you know, the favorite scene is when it brings you back to the house that started it all, right? She finds out who her dad, you know, the dad's the killer. It's the house. It, it just, it brings me back to the nineties, which is the coolest, is, which is the best feeling in the oh, fucking absolutely. world. It made me feel a certain way. I got lost in this movie. I'm gonna go for it right now. It's a lights on. This is an easy one. <laughs> oh, we're, we're going we're, right. Yeah, to we're cruising. It. We're cruising. Yeah. Will <laughs> movie overall was just a blast. Yep. Like it was everything I wanted, but it was also, like I said, it was fresh. Yep. All the new characters are amazing. The old cast did a great job supporting. I got lost in it too. Mm-hmm. I always get lost in the screen movies. It was everything I wanted. It's a lights on. Damn. All right, Jake. I know you probably had a big fucking speech because I had a big He's fucking out speech. Piece of paper a big down here. fucking speech. Go ahead. Wow. Go ahead. I'm going to say my favorite scene was actually the kill scene of West because you keep on getting psyched good out. It's good one. I think that's a good one. And obviously, when you find out since Stu's house, that's definitely freaking awesome. Yep. Um, yeah. As someone who's been like a huge fan of this franchise, I really don't think this movie lacked in any 
aspect whatsoever. I feel like the director knows exactly what he's doing. I think everyone that was hired to be an actor in this movie brought what they needed to bring. And I just think it's super solid. I think five movies in with this franchise, you can't get much better than a fifth movie in a franchise in this one. So for me, I'm for sure giving this a lights on. I am sleeping with the lights on tonight because Ghostface is still and, scary. And, and Jake, we, you know, with a lot of new viewers and a lot of new people, do you want to do you want to like kind of run down the lights on lights off? Uh, yes. Thing that we're doing. So, here. so to, the, to elaborate. So when we first started the podcast, we want to have a voting scheme that we felt like would go well with the theme of horror movies. And we always viewed as man. Well, if a movie's scary enough, you're going to sleep with the lights on. So we thought. You know, lights on, scary, creepy, Mm -hmm. loved it, liked it. And then lights off means it didn't have an impact on you. You didn't really care for it. And you're going to be sleeping with the lights off tonight. So So we're all lights on. Lights on is a good review. Lights off is a bad review. That is it. Mm -hmm. There it is. Mm -hmm. Episode 19 of Fright Night. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. I I forgot my favorite scene. What? I forgot what? It's just when the girl catches on fire. That's oh. it. <laughs> that's your favorite scene. Is I had to do it, man. My OCD was getting. That's there. when that, getting that's actually the when the movie yeah. got, went into sheer chaos. Yeah. Was after just that. the start of everything that was hell in that movie. <laughs> well, there it is, Jake. So uh, we'll have episode twenty. We're going back to back. We'll be going into Scream Six mm-hmm. next. Jake is so bummed that we just rushed but to lights off. I'm so oh, no, stoked on Scream bummed. Six. I'm hey, Scream Scream Six episode. I got a little something special. I got a little. Something special for everybody for the start of the show. Sick. I'm gonna play you a little treat, Jake. You know what it is? Oh, I know. What oh, it is. I, I do. Know I do know what it is. I think, yes. I think the uh, listeners will enjoy it. Uh, I'm gonna enjoy it again after I see it again. <laughs> I think it's so cool. <laughs> yeah, me too. So, okay, so there it is. Episode 19, Scream Five, Fright Night, Fright Night, baby. So, like, like promised, we're gonna kind of combine things here. I, I kind of wanted to go into some unsigned bands to mm. to showcase. So. A little bit about this if you're the first time joining in. I had a Twitch show over at twitch.tv slash DW Presents. Yep. We had a show called Space Zebra. We were the number one music show on there for about three years, two and a half, three years. And we found some of the best unsigned bands because I say it all the time. Your favorite on your favorite band was unsigned at once. And just like myself, when we were starting Blackcraft, where nobody wanted to give us the time or day or, or anything, you know, um, I want to create a platform where we could help unsigned fucking artists because it's near and dear music saves lives music saved my life so many fucking times i know a lot of people can relate to that and we talked about discord for a little bit and we'll have an open conversation here with you guys as yeah we, as we kind of go into some unsigned bands here so on my twitch show why we were like the number one music show for for those for that time was we were giving unsigned bands slots on massive music festivals whether that's louder than life mm-hmm. um you know aftershock incarceration welcome to rockville which I think we're going to be at all those this year to TBD. We'll, we're kind of talking through all this right now. We'll see if it works out. Maybe, maybe not. If not, we are going to be touring the U S this year. We're going to be doing pop-ups at different smoke shops across the, uh, across the U S. So yeah. if you do have a smoke shop, like we said earlier in the show, tubes is our, uh, tubes is our, not our manufacturer. They're a distributor. That's tubes distribution link is going to be down below. Or if we do get creative and we have a editing thing, it'll be right <laughs> here. Maybe we'll see. <laughs> so, so, with that all being said, you know, I, I walked from the Twitch show two months ago. Now I missed the fuck out of it. You know, I'm very grateful. We have the six, six, six club in the discord. And if you don't know what the six, six, six club is blackcraftcult.com, just Google, just type in six, six, six club up there and it'll pop up. There's so many perks that you get each month. You get a discount code, you get bonus content, you get access to the discord. There's so much fucking cool shit mm-hmm. and so much more now cool shit going on since we're, since we got the podcast cruising. Right. So I really miss unsigned bands. I fucking miss it. And I miss the, I miss the competition aspect. I, I love competition. I'm gambling, right? We, we, we love competition, but also it's yeah. just fucking fun. Yeah. Well, that's, that's the key point here is this is fucking fun. We're, we're the other shit made me feel like a fucking job and it, it made, it didn't make it feel fun anymore. And, and that's nothing against, you know, people that run the channel or do anything. It just, mm-hmm. for me, it just started feeling like a fucking job. I and, relate to that. And I'm so fucking busy now. And, and like we talk about this consistency and you got to stay consistent. And, with with Twitch, you know, we had we had commitment because Twitch bought the show. Mm-hmm. Actually, Amazon Twitch bought our show, so we had to be committed four times a week. We had X amount of hours we had to hit, and I get it. I respect it. It was it was a very nice payday for for everyone involved. I get it, but it, it, it's I, I lost my passion for it, and and life's too fucking short. I don't want to do shit that makes me unhappy or makes me feel a certain way. So I'm glad you bring that up. So with this, 
I want to get creative here. I don't know how I want to kind of, and this will be open conversation and we don't have to think about all the answers today, but I want to create another competition and I want to do it with Blackcraft and Absolutely. We'll, figure, we'll figure out a fucking way. It's it, all of this is very serendipitous because, um, I didn't even know anything that was going on with DWP uh -huh. until I presented you this podcast idea to do the movie review. And it just felt like it was the perfect time to yeah. segue into something new that you personally felt was right for you, right, right for the brand. Right. And I'm it, like, to me, like, I, I, I know this is our first video and I, I really wanted to get that at, out and say like, like, I'm so grateful to be a part of this. And Honestly, we're going to be discussing like a genre of music. And we, we already talked about this in a previous episode where um, this is not my kind of music and I'm not familiar with it. And this yeah. is going to be like a huge learning, <laughs> like a learning experience. It's going for to be me. fun. I, I challenge you. I'm telling you, you know, if, if and, and listen uh, to our listeners who are always listening, in, I'm sorry if this is going to be a little bit repetitive today because we have <laughs> a lot of new viewers, a lot of new things today. So yeah. bear with us for this episode. But uh, thank you for always supporting us, but just bear with us a little bit here. Mm -hmm. I said it once to you already, you know, you know, Jake, Jake's in uh, a band called strange kids with Josh balls from, he was in motionless and white. Check them out. Strange kids. I'm, I'm even, Thanks, I'm even, man. I really appreciate the plug. Thank you. You, you. you got to check it out, but I challenge you this year to what? listen to more rock music. I think you'll be inspired from oh, some rock music. It's going to be I, happening. I so. so with that being said, yeah, good. I think part of the fun too is just seeing and watching you listen to these bands and seeing what you like and don't like. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. So in the discord, uh, I just asked the six, six, six club, yo, shoot me some music references because I am going to play some of my favorites since we have a lot of new people watching and listening today. Mm -hmm. Uh, so like I said, you know, um, listeners who've been listening a lot, I'm sorry. I'm I got to play my favorite <laughs> tracks. I know, I know you're probably getting sick of them. I'm going to play a few of those, but I'm going to play some new tracks too. So this comes from uh, a six, six, six club member Z Stepic. I love you Z. You recommended from ashes to embers, okay? And the song Ooh. is called "Made of Misery," which Jake Simons can definitely relate to. <laughs> I want to check it out. Let's just see. I, I just want to. I just want to show everyone here the bands, the quality of unsigned bands, because unsigned bands get so overlooked, right? Hey, it shouldn't be a thing. How great is this? Talking weed. Oh, I'm so excited. Horror movies. It's the best. This every Monday. It's the best way to start. This off is. The week this too. is. So uh, this, my this ain't Monday, but. You, I think you took one of those gummies, but you'll be okay. Here we go. Oh, boy. Uh, oh boy. From Ashes to Embers, Made of Misery. I didn't expect the chorus. Uh, to be that's that a chorus. I wasn't expecting that chorus either. That's a chorus. My favorite part of that song, though, is that opening riff with the groove to it. Yeah, it's a, that's a that's a fucking vibe. So that's from Ashes to Embers. Made of Misery is the track there. Z Stepic, I see you in the Discord. What 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 do you guys think? You know what? Uh, you know me. I always gravitate towards the percussion, and I really did enjoy the drums in that track. I also like that synth they were playing in the background, cool, right? like during the verse part. I was I, I was kind of a fan of that too as well. Are you Man. starting to like the structure a little more? What was that like structured songs a little bit more? Or are you still? Uh, that's going to take a minute. It's going to take. Yeah, a that's going to take a minute. So, um, moving on here, let's. I want to go. Uh, let's do Satan Stupid Step Kid six 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 from the from the Discord. So, shout out uh, Satan Stupid Step Kid. <laughs> Got the Blackcraft logo tattooed. Wow. Got the Blackcraft logo tattooed. Lifer right, right there. Like that six, is six, a six lifer. Me, it's like the level of dedication yes. for like the diehards, but yes. that's a whole different level. Same stupid step kid. I see you in here. Always love We appreciate you. We appreciate you so fucking much. So, okay. You want to hear Into the Vein, everyone you knew. Into the Vein. Hey, we're on, we're, we're just flying here. We're just, we're just, this is live. You, hey, this is like my command center. You guys like it? <laughs> Wait, so the band name is Into in, the Vein. And in, Into? Into the Vein. Yeah. Do you know okay. them? No, not familiar. Everyone you knew, everyone you knew, right? Was the song. So this okay. is a this is a track March 9th, 2023. That just fucking came out. 
All right, let's do it here. Let's oh, see. I like newies. I like it too. Let's do it. straight out the gate to me was like straight new metal but bro then, but then like i fucking <laughs> i was surprised like how atmospheric it was i the love yeah. the atmosphere yeah. too did that beginning of the song where it's just guitar with the atmosphere that was giving me some the xx vibes oh right yeah. that's a good that's a good that's shout a that's a good shout, shout right that's a great i shout. love that wow. kind of guitar i was really into the atmosphere it, i really like the chords too that, and this that, that's a great shout xx vibes but will what you said about the new metal bro straight up it, with it, just it reminded me it, bro it, it looked like me and you were back in your room in in uh middle school yeah and fucking get ready to go to Ozfest, and we were just listening to like this new metal track and they and had that what a fucking down. vibe oh yeah for sure that's, i'm i'm really into this kind of melodic like style of music yeah. when it comes to heavy music because it's a nice juxtaposition between heavy melodic it's like you're anticipating the next transition of what your mood is right yeah. so into the vein that was a good shout uh thank you uh ryan so here's a band i really want to i want to showcase here and and sorry for speeding through these a little bit because we are going to have more segments where we're actually be playing all the tracks and oh absolutely there, there will be some more this is our first this is our first episode, first, first so, so we're going to be doing us. some fine tuning. We'll be doing some fine tuning. I just wanted to kind of this this episode. I really just kind of wanted to highlight some unsigned artists yeah. for, for the uh, viewers here. So here's the band I got a shout out. Band called Lone Wolf. I'm going to shout Lone. out this band called Lone Wolf. I we hear have, you say this name all the time. I don't know if I've heard. Cleveland, of it. Ohio. We have a shirt called Lone Wolf. Yeah, they they owe me royalties. <laughs> I'm just playing. Uh, <laughs> You're so, going to be getting a letter in the mail. <laughs> so, so this band, Lone Wolf, out of Cleveland, Ohio, uh, very close to where we grew up. Very over, familiar over with Cleveland. Hardworking guys. I got to give this band all their fucking flowers. They just threw a benefit show for uh, Hillary and Jonathan. That was our club member I was talking uh -huh. about with the cancer. And uh, all the proceeds went to Hillary. So uh, that's, awesome. that's fucking awesome. Dude. That Hillary, so Hillary, that's super awesome. Hillary, we're sending you all of our love, all of our positive energy, positive vibes. You fucking got this. If you ever we need anything, you. you guys got my phone number. You call. Um, so and, and 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 shout out to all the six 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 club members too who were there. I, I'm gonna forget some names, so just bear with me. But I'm gonna throw out some names. I want to throw out Miss Sinister, um, Marissa, who really organized a lot of this. We got mm -hmm. uh, Orm. Unborn Death, we got Harbinger, we got Jay Van, we got Josh Paladine showed up. Josh Paladine was in the house. You know he had I a, love me, Josh. You know, Josh you know, Paladine is one of the nicest yeah. fucking people on earth. You know he I had, appreciate Josh. You, you know that oh, motherfucker had some bourbon in his hand for sure. I'm trying to get <laughs> every quit. fucking time. I know he, he, he takes a lot of edibles, but I'm trying to get to, to quit the uh the quit the bourbon. booze. Yeah, quit the booze. Quit the just booze, pick up the edibles. Pick up the plant, you know. Um, but I love Josh. Uh, I know Tamale was there. I'm trying to think. I don't know. Whatever Sage Josh has taken, dude, he gets shit done. Yeah, you know, man. he's got a good formula going. Yeah, that's true. So I want to shout out Lone Wolf here. So this is the band called Lone Wolf. I'm gonna play the I'm gonna play the track called Time Bomb because a uh, little little background about Lone Wolf. They were they were one of our bands on my Twitch show. They actually won. This is pretty cool. They won our Smoke Blackcraft commercial, which we still got to shoot with those guys. They won a um oh that's we're, sick. we're paying for the music video and, and their official song will be our commercial. Uh huh. So we're shooting a commercial with that. We still got to work out all these details. They've been so busy putting the show together. So here's Lone Wolf with Time Bomb. Talk about new metal. Time bomb. There ain't no rest for the wicked. 
I said after the last song, I was like, that was some new metal. That was a fucking new let, metal. Okay. Let, let me tell you what makes my heart so happy. Yeah. Why? I love seeing people help others. And, and, oh, yeah. and this kind of goes back to why we started Black Craft. I love seeing the support. We, we wanted to create a community and family and to see others share that same mm -hmm. vision and passion yeah. to do what they just did over the weekend. Give you your flowers. Shout out to all the 666 Club. Hillary and Jonathan, we're sending love. But you know what else I really fucking love is sitting in this room and seeing everyone fucking smile. This feels <laughs> fucking nice. We that that should he said there ain't no rest for the wicked. Everyone was hey, Will a, never smiled that fucking big in his life, bro. <laughs> <laughs> fucking smile, this bro. was a really fun song. And I love that it's like switching up almost like every four to eight measures. Like yeah. it's never repetitive. It's nah. really but it keeps the groove going. It yeah. keeps you know the groove mean? going. I really love all the transitions and yeah, dude, when it hits, it hits. It fucking does hits. He, so good. Does that lead singer sing for another band too? I don't know. I don't, he I don't sounds know. so familiar to me to I someone also, else. It's good shit, though. I also want to talk about the sound production. The sound production was amazing in yeah. that. I, I'm really into, like, sound engineering, and I, I thought that was very well mixed. I almost, like, you know, like, I'll write down, like, atmospheric or whatever to make sure I talk. Mm -hmm. I almost stopped saying the production because I, I just... These guys are unsigned, all of them, and I, I just feel I feel like that on like nine out of ten tracks now. They just all are yeah. crazy if, produced. If yeah. I heard this just randomly, like outside, I would never think this band was unsigned. I would think they've already been signed. That's what I'm saying, man. Everyone's favorite uh, professional. So, everyone's everyone's favorite band was unsigned at one point. So, okay, I'm gonna play one last track here. So yeah. I gotta I gotta shout out to a female artist, Marlene Mendoza. She's out of, I want to say Cincinnati, Ohio. She's one of the OGs, right? Mar so Marlene, so let me let me give you a little backstory here okay. to Twitch and how we got to where we're at today. So when the pandemic happened, mm -hmm. first my first thoughts in my head were, holy fuck, you know, damn, my friends in, you know, that were musicians, this is gonna be tough for their for them, right? Because mm -hmm. couldn't do anything. Then my head went, well, at least fuck, at least some of them are very fortunate to be financially. I know they're financially stable, so we'll we'll weather the storm, we'll figure out merch drops, we'll we'll figure this out. Yeah. But then I'm like, holy fuck. What about unsigned artists that are grinding and this is their, you know, gave up their other career. Oh my God. Like they really got flipped upside down. So mm -hmm. I really wanted to start a Twitch channel because I, I didn't know much. I mean, obviously I watch YouTube religiously. If Will, you could fucking vouch what YouTube's on at the house 24 mm seven. -hmm. I didn't know the platform. Unfortunately, Jake Miller, who's over at uh, Twitch over at uh, DWP side is really talented at producing shows and he's unbelievable and congrats Jake you got an access show with Matt Pinfield and uh, it's very much so rad. that's cool. fucking huge cool to fucking see producer cool. Jake cool is to fucking, fucking see. awesome cool to fucking see. but Jake um I went to him with this idea and I said bro there's so many signed bands that Blackcraft fortunately got to work with you know we worked with Kirk Hammett with Metallica we were Corey Taylor at Slipknot you know we're going to be doing some stuff with Avenger like there's so much cool shit I mean yeah. the list goes on and on and you know I'm sitting here thinking in my head like fuck dude is there a way to to have unsigned bands submit to us and we could help them out? We can raise some money for them and and you know, like the community, bro, people just start donating money and helping these unsigned bands. So I wanted to put on like a virtual show. You yeah. know, I was trying to figure this out. Like this is like day three of fucking quarantine of of losing my mind. I was like, oh my God, this is crazy. Yeah. So we came across an artist named Marlene Mendoza. She's a big supporter of of Black Craft. She's actually leaving out for a tour. I think they I think they leave in a couple of days here. Awesome. Or there, it might be out. Just just Google Marlene Mendoza. Check her out on Instagram. They're out. They're going to be on the road with uh, Living Dead Girl, which is another band that I'll play here in, in down the road. But I, I wanted to I wanted to take it out with this because this is really what started it. So I got up Marlene. You know she she has a bunch of new songs out since 2018. Obviously, her latest release was August 11th. Song is called Insanity, which all three of us are we could really relate to. But <laughs> I want to go back to the track Not Afraid. 
And that's what started it for me because this is the first track that came through our Twitch show back in 2020. Ever. This is the very first Very one? first track ever that come through wow. that I looked at Jake and I go, I fucking knew it. Because people don't care about unsigned bands. I don't give a yeah. fuck. Like people talk shit all day long on unsigned bands, unsigned artists. They don't fucking, you know, no one cares. But we're here, but we were throwing the stake in the ground. We fucking care. So everyone's homework tonight after you're watching this episode is to come up, help us comment below, like literally flood the comments mm -hmm. with ideas, competitions, brackets. We already did that on Twitch. I want to do anything like that's exhausting or, or yeah, let Space Zebra show keep all that shit. I want to do something yeah. fresh. I want to make this fun, exciting, whatever it is. Fucking let's help these bands get signed. Let's help them raise some money. Let's let's do it. But I'm going to take it out here. This is Marlene Mendoza, Not Afraid. song it's been a minute but i yeah. remember that fucking song marlene mendoza feeling the feels right now we love you marlene yeah shout out marlene <laughs> uh sending you all the best love on the tour go crush it go kill it have a good time stay safe out there hey we did it done episode wow. 19 got through a baby first one on youtube wow well, i'm so happy we got to start with the scream franchise too me too. So uh, thank you to everyone that's watching, supporting. Will, thank you for being here. Jake, thank you thank for being here. Thank you for here. having Raul, me. Oh, this the man behind the scenes. You. Yo, you have to shout out Raul. Hell yeah. He's killed it today. Raul, He's been here for a fucking Raul. minute. That's it, man. Raul is the, is the man. So that's it, man. Anyone anyone else got anything before we get on out of here? I can't wait to hear more music. I I've can't. got a dinner to buy because I lost a bet. Yeah, we're going to go to Buffalo Wild Wings. Oh, oh that shit, like, really? That sounds unbelievable. I can't wait. Bro, Buffalo Wild Wings after <laughs> yeah, this? Yeah, yeah. Hey, Buffalo Wild Wings, if you want to be a sponsor, let us know. You know, Jake won that bet, really, because no matter what, he was going to get dinner bought for him. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I win. That's you won. That's food for thought. Sometimes uh, the guy hey, wins. Like always, be kind to yourself. Mm -hmm. We love you. I love you. We're out we of here. You. We did it. This is This feels like the start of something really fucking big, and I'm, I'm very grateful. I got for, feels for right now. I got, I got feels right now, too, so... Hey, if you're looking for a sign that everything's going to be okay, everything's going to be okay. This is us letting you know everything's going to be, okay. be okay. We got this shit. We good? You got a family here. We got a family. Good. We're good. We'll see you in the Discord. Come uh, come find us. Bye-bye. See you. See you.